The rate of diffusion refers to how quickly particles spread out. There are three factors that affect the rate of diffusion. First is the concentration gradient. Next, we have temperature. And finally, the surface area of the membrane. In the exam, you will be required to recall these factors and also be able to explain how each of them affects the rate of diffusion. So let's first explore what a concentration gradient is. Remember that the concentration gradient is the difference in the concentration of a substance across a membrane. In this image, you can see particles on either side of a partially permeable membrane, for example, the inside and the outside of a cell. On the left-hand side, you can see that there are six particles, and on the right, there are four particles. This shows an example of a low concentration gradient. This is because there isn't that much difference in the number of particles on this side of the membrane compared to this side. Remember, this dotted line indicates a partially permeable membrane. In this image, we have nine particles on the left-hand side of the membrane and two particles on the right-hand side of the membrane. This box contains a higher concentration gradient compared to the one above. Remember that the direction of diffusion is said to be down the concentration gradient from an area of higher concentration towards an area of lower concentration. So how does the size of the concentration gradient affect the rate of diffusion? The greater the concentration gradient, the greater the rate of diffusion. Let's just remind ourselves of the starting concentrations from the previous slide. So to start with, we are starting with six particles on the left-hand side of the membrane in this box and four on this side. This is quite a small concentration gradient, so in this box we would see a low rate of diffusion. Remember that since rate is a number, you shouldn't say slower rate of diffusion, but instead lower rate of diffusion. Rate is represented by a number and a number can't be slow. In this bottom box, we're starting with nine particles over on the left-hand side and just two over on the right. This is a greater concentration gradient and therefore we would see a higher rate of diffusion. Okay, so now that diffusion has occurred in both of the boxes, let's have a look at the final concentrations on either side of the membrane. So we started with six particles and we're finishing with five. And on this side, we started with four and we are also finishing with five. The finishing concentration is the same on both sides of the membrane. The same thing has occurred in this bottom box. In exam questions, you might be given similar examples to this and be asked to identify whether particles will diffuse more quickly or slowly. So how does membrane surface area affect the rate of diffusion? The higher the temperature, the faster the rate of diffusion. This box contains particles at 10 degrees Celsius. Now we know that particles are going to move down a concentration gradient, so in this box, particles are going to move from the left to the right. Remember that particles are always moving, they never sit still, so the box will even out with the particles continuing to move around. The particles in this box are a bit warmer at 20 degrees Celsius. So these are also going to move down the concentration gradient, like in the box above, however they're going to move and mix more quickly. This is because they have more kinetic energy. Exam questions may give you examples of diffusion happening at different temperatures and you might be asked to identify at which temperatures particles will diffuse more quickly or more slowly. So we've explored concentration gradients and temperature. Let's have a look at how differences in surface area of the membrane affect the rate of diffusion. The greater the membrane surface area, the faster the rate of diffusion. SA to vol is shorthand for surface area to volume ratio. Above this annotation, you can see two examples of plant cells. This one over to the left has a smaller surface area to volume ratio, and the one on the right has a greater surface area to volume ratio. You might recognize that this is a root hair cell. So in which of these cells will the rate of diffusion be higher? A larger surface area means there is more surface to diffuse across. Therefore, this cell with a smaller surface area to volume ratio will have a lower rate of diffusion. And this cell which has a greater surface area to volume ratio will have a higher rate of diffusion. For the exam, you should be able to generally compare the surface area to volume ratio of different cells and the consequences for the rate of diffusion. 
Remember that a larger surface area means that there is more surface to diffuse across, and this results in a higher rate of diffusion. While some exam questions will accept just surface area or surface area of the membrane when describing this, longer exam questions may require you to use the full phrase of surface area to volume ratio. Therefore, it's a good habit to always use the full phrase in the exam so you don't miss out on marks. Thanks for watching. If you want to take your GCSE revision to the next level, head over to launchpadlearning.com and check out our smart learning platform that's been designed to get you top results in your exams. We cover your whole specification and make revision fun with interactive quizzes, easy to follow videos and more. You'll be kept motivated by your own AI tutor who's here to support you every step of the way. To check it out for yourself, click here or click here to keep watching a selection of the videos from our full GCSE Biology course. See you there!